Oh my gosh. It is windy as can be. Look at this all behind me. Now, I never thought that we'd actually get this type of experience when we did this, this sailing, learn how to sail, whatever you want to call it, company crew, but we wanted a test drive of what this life was going to be like, but you better believe we got it right here. These boats are starting to bounce around like little pinballs in a pinball machine. It's time to batten down the hatches. In 2014, we sold all of our possessions, quit our jobs, and set off as a family for a one-year adventure in Costa Rica. The one year was not enough, so we rolled up our sleeves and figured out how to make this journey continue. We are world towning. Join our family, Largo, Jessica, Avalon, and Will, as we travel the world to connect deeply to local cultures, go on epic adventures, and grow closer as a family. In the last several episodes of World Towning, we left our motorhome Lemonade and headed to Malta to embark on a 10-day sailboat training experience. Okay, before we head down into the thing, this is the patio. We have official terms. We lived on board the entire time and learned how to sail with the goal of figuring out whether this is something we can do full time. It feels good so far. I mean, I don't want to jump to conclusions. We're now at the end of the adventure, but as luck should have it, we're going to have the night of our lives as Malta embraces for their biggest storm to hit in over a decade. All right. It was a crazy night. We are out just to go take some quick showers and get off the boat a bit because we're, I'm a little motion sickness and I'm not. Okay, so we're on the final days of our sailing adventure and we've gone through so much so far. We've been very good little student sailors, don't you think? Now we can open the seacock again. Is there, a, but should the seacock be closed if you're not using the boat? Seacock or seacock? Seacock. Right, okay. They really have some really just atrocious names for some of these things on a boat, don't they? Well, it, it comes from tradition in different languages. We've learned to tie knots. Avalon is a genius at the knot tying. Can I do it right? Yep. Can I do that? Avalon, just because you learned a couple of knots doesn't mean that you get the opportunity to go ahead and tie them up there. Why not? I mean... Largo, you realize you could say no. No! Too late! We got to learn how to behave like a family on board. We got to... Because we never do that in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, I think this is one of the few times the kids are actually excited to clean. I'm gonna tell you, as much as boat life looks really glamorous and lovely and wonderful, I think it has more chores and is a little bit harder life than RV life. Here comes the water! No, not yet. Do you feel you're something stronger, Lago? No. You feel the wood getting cleaner? No. And I, there's something about that that I really like because I think kids should do hard things and see what they're capable of and look at this. <laughs> but what we did not realize that was gonna happen is that we were gonna be taken through the ringers of what is probably the worst storm Malta's been seen in has seen in ten years. Well what they said That's was what like, the news says. They said it was gonna be like the worst storm in three years and we got to experience it be because we're just lucky like that. <laughs> so we have been told that a force something, I don't know the forces, but force may the seven. May the force be with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only force I know. A force 10, I think. And so this is, I guess, what's considered the calm before the storm, but even this is a little rocky for me. So I'm I'm nervous of what it's gonna be like. And I'm thinking maybe I should take my Dramamine, but I'm just gonna dump, jump in, you know, like feet first and just see see how much I got. So I'm saying it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable. How is a little uncomfortable? Like, it's gonna, is it gonna be, am I gonna have to hold on? Like, are we gonna be like? Every boat around us, they left. <laughs> Oh wow, that kind of... Okay, so as you can see here, here we are at the dock. We're tied down. Boats are starting to leave. We had boat and boat, and then essentially that boat, and they've all left to try and seek, I guess, more pleasant places to stay for the night. I... It's starting to get cloudy. I don't know... We're gonna be fine. We're tied down. And we're like, Steve, should we be leaving? And he goes, no. Steve is, has had a lifetime and a half of experience out in the world and sailing. And he's like, no, we're gonna be fine. And look, we're still here. So said, we were clearly and he fine. said, plus, since you live in RV, you can pretty much deal with this. Yeah. <laughs> But basically around three o'clock, four o'clock is when the weather started coming in. And the first thing that we saw besides rain was hail. Oh gonna have to swim it's hailing. 
There's like snow up there. Yeah, it's probably gonna freeze. Who wants to take a shower? I we need to just stand outside and take a shower. I know, but I'm pretty stinky, but... We can walk well, and get a coffee are. if you like. Oh, no way, I don't want a coffee yes, that yes, bad. Give me an ice cream while you're there. I don't want a coffee that bad. You want an ice cream in the middle of hail? <laughs> it's warm in here. Ready, set, go. Oh my god, it's freezing! Oh my gosh, what is this? Whoa, whoa! <laughs> this is no joke right there. This is real hail. <laughs> so if we want to, can we go skiing outside right now? <laughs> do you do you often pack skis in a sailboat? Now I'm gonna admit at this point, I wasn't I was never scared. I've never I've never been scared like, oh we're gonna die. But I was a little nervous about Am I going to be sick and throwing up? And then what am I going to do? Because I can't come sit out here if it's hailing. And if I go over there and sit on the land, I've been told that the cats are going to pee all over me. So I was weighing my options like, okay, if it gets really bad. But by the time it started getting really bad, we just went to bed. We slept. That night. We slept like one massively rocked baby. All right, so basically, we are we're getting ready for bed. Okay, if something goes wrong, you head outside and you jump in the water and you swim like mad. No, that's a very bad idea. Okay. Well, something could hit you in the head. What would you do then? Uh, you know the boat's pretty safe, or the dock. So or we just dry land. Itself. Oh, we can just fire up the motors and, and head out to Sicily. I think that would probably be even worse than in here. All right. Well, Here we have like maybe maybe call Captain Steve. Maybe we should wait it out. You want to go to Marriott? Yes. Oh <laughs> no. my God, yes. Laura, did you hear that? So at this point, it's about ten o'clock at night. We're tied down like eight different ways to, yeah, to we, the yeah. We uh, Steve reinforced it today, and. But just in case, though, we've packed up all of our sort of. We have a getaway bag. We have our all of our computers. Oh, whoa. <laughs> we have the passports, everything the keys, sort of, the keys to lemonade. Yeah, and we're basically telling ourselves that this is just part of the adventure. But but just in case the adventure turns south real fast. We have an exit plan. We do have an exit plan. I mean, Mom, here. Dad, don't be scared. <laughs> All right, so we're going to hopefully wake up and it's going to be fine. I'm not scared. There's a lot scarier things out there like me in the morning without food and I scare myself. Listen, I feel like we've just jumped right into the friggin' fire with this sailing thing, right? We had like force, force six, which is pretty strong. We went out the other day. We've got like hail and- Anything you think right of. Right now, I'm not gonna say I'm not a little nervous. Like I didn't ex think, ex whoa. I didn't expect to experience this in our first five sailing days. And Steve said the other day, we're just gonna go in. These have been some pretty strenuous waves uh, when we don't wanna scare you. Oh no, but this isn't scaring me, this storm. We heard every bump and grind and, and, and maneuver that could be done on a boat. And did you hear the couple where it actually felt like, like wood was breaking, like Not just like a scratch or like a little bump like boats do, like a real bang, crack something's leaking and I even made Will get up in the middle of the night and check the bilge to see if the water was spilling over because you could hear swoosh 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 in the boat but eventually morning came and we realized that you know what we're being tossed around like like a like a ping pong still a really rocky morning. It's, it's actually gotten worse, the winds. We went from about 35 knots per hour as far as a wind gust before we went to bed to now it's about like 47 knots per hour. We're just shifting all over the place. Luckily for us, there's not a boat on that side. There's a boat only on this side. And so that bumping is only once in a while, meaning like every like 10 seconds. But what we're also noticing now is that there is a lot of like water underneath the boat. We're not gonna run the bilge yet because it's not really a massive amount of water, but you hear the slushing every single time that we go around and around. So um, we're just gonna let the kids, well, I'm gonna let the kids sleep in a little longer just because it's still asleep. Oh my God, the kids are still asleep. And um, I'm just checking to make sure that the ropes are okay. We've lost shore power as well, by the way. So it's not like we can go ahead and sort of start running the laptops. We have the juice that's on them, but 
we basically lost shore power. So besides sort of the, the whole rocking thing, it's, it's pretty interesting. I've got to figure out what's going on here with the power because unfortunately it's Sunday and we don't really have a lot of choices of where to go and get, maybe get to a restaurant so we can sit and work in a coffee shop. And the other thing is here in Malta, there is UK sort of style of plugs. So our European outlets or our American outlets essentially, that is has a European converter or adapter will not work here and there's no stores to be found at this point that has an adapter that will let us work so I was told by our boat guy Steve that maybe just check to see if the power has been tripped over here at the box and it looks like yeah I gotta flip this thing on and go like that all right but in the meantime, check it out. There are, the, the marina guys are sitting around here and they're just basically fixing all the different boats that are maybe in need of assistance. These guys are just getting wet, getting cold and making sure all these boats are sort of maintaining their life support. Good morning. Good morning. So are, all the, are you the owner? A friend of ours, A friend another of one. So ba basically they just need to be retied up, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, it's pretty bad, no? Yeah. Is this the worst you've seen in Malta? I think so. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. The gusts are, are quite bad. Walking on this on this pontoon, it's like it's like a roller coaster. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun, though. Oh, this thing just popped off again. I don't know why. Yep, it doesn't want to stay on. In the meantime... Our gangway fell into Take the it. water. Take it. How are we gonna get? <laughs> oh my gosh! Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Go back inside now. What? Oh boy, that was. It's covered in water. Though. What is the camera? The lens. Let's go inside. Let's, okay. let's, let's, let's go inside. Let's go. Come take the camera quick. Largo. Largo. What happened? Dad dropped the ladder into the ocean. Oh my god. Now I will say the next morning. Uh, my clothes were barely on and I was out the door, toothbrush in hand, brushing down the dock because I knew if I stayed on this all day, I would be bleh. And Avalon and Largo and I were left to fend for ourselves. You guys did great. So apparently last night, Steve, our instructor, he, oh, we gotta watch this. He came by and checked on us around five in the morning and basically he left us a pretty nonchalant text. It's really funny. He said, just been down to the boat, rocky but secure, stay strong. It's, he's just one of those guys that pretty much you survive and you survive and you keep on surviving and that's about it. And he's expecting us to do the same. He just came by now, it's almost like about noontime. And he left us some food, which is really thoughtful and kind of him. So how do you like living in rough weather on a boat? Um, it's not very fun, to tell the truth. Especially when the electricity is not and it's freezing on the boat. I'm wearing like 10 layers, plus the blanket. Other than that, it's okay. It's freezing! That's Largo's opinion. But at the end of the day, this is not a vacation. This is... I just hope it's not like this 100% of the time. So Steve sent us a text saying one of the things we should do is check out the bilge just to make sure nothing built up underneath. Because we heard a little something underneath. So I'm gonna... <laughs> and that is the friendly sound of your neighborhood bilge pump. Check this out. Another episode of RVNN where I'm not comfortable with water being in a boat. I, I just don't think it's safe. But apparently it is safe. And um, well, and as you can see, mom isn't here. She is at the coffee shop, probably being very happy that she's not here. I'm the only one with the microphone. Give me that. I can use the microphone too. Give me that. Give it back. <laughs> uh, but all the ropes stay tied on. And, and the interesting thing is a lot of in the arena, not a lot, but some of the boats, their, their ropes snapped or they weren't hooked properly and they drifted out. We've seen, we saw a couple boats turned over. In 
in terms of like how strong the winds are, it got up to like 50, something, 50 low 50 knots, which is the equivalent of a tropical storm. Um, yeah, if you don't know how to tie up a boat, it's gonna be curtains for you here. So when all was said and done, they said that this was the worst storm in Malta in 10 years. In 10 years. Some people, the news will say like forever, but. And you guys know us, we go big or we don't go at all. Now, not that we planned this, <laughs> and, and as we always say. We planned it. This was our... part of our training for living on a sailboat <laughs> was going through something like this. We told our instructor, I want to see everything. I want the worst case scenario. We meant all of Malta. <laughs> we didn't mean all of the weather of Malta. <laughs> as we missed several sails, and we got this roller coaster ride. <laughs> Our instructor Steve, Steve said, We're gonna give you one more ride on the boat because you know why? You've been missing out and on I, everything you, you paid money for. I think he was secretly saying in his head, and this is gonna be the ride of your life because the, the seas never really calmed down from the storm. Okay. Good last sail ever. Not forever. You got that right now, forever. Okay, you see that ahead of us. That's Malta. There's a storm coming, and I need a hand to hold with the fear of being here. It takes a lot of responsibility, so well done. With the winds blowing, Is she going to pass the course? And the yep, leaves she'll pass the course. As they did with you those summers ago. Of course, we saved the roughest sail for our last sail. Thanks a lot, Steve. You're welcome. Oh, Having on. lived through a gale, I thought it's time you moved through it. I've been to enough galas in my life. That life has passed, right? Yeah. Ordinarily, the objective of a final sail is to get you to wanting to sail more. I don't think this final sail <laughs> makes me want to go out and sail more. I just can't go underneath here. I think I do want to sail more, but mercy, he's throwing everything at us at this point. This is normally outside your limit. I wouldn't be out here by myself, that's I would. for sure. I would. Yes, and that's why you'd be dead fast. <laughs> I'd only motor. I actually got sick for the very first time. I got sick. During that ride. I didn't throw up, but we felt bad. But I'm glad we did that because well, because I don't ever want to do that again. <laughs> because we would say to ourselves, "Bam, we got, we got, we missed out on all of our sails." <laughs> now we're like, "Boy, I wish I never went on that sail. <laughs> it was not very pretty." You know the calm days we're like a sailing. We had like a day where it was calm sailing, member, and we do, and we anchored down for lunch. I see a pampered lifestyle coming for you and I. I don't see that happening. Yeah, I no, agree. Mm -hmm. I don't. <laughs> I see us running out of Wi-Fi. I see. I see the terrors <laughs> when we run, run out of water. I see one kid pushing another kid overboard. I see Largo turning the helm so fast we flipped this thing 360. I see. And then see everyone's shrugging people. their shoulders going, what happened? Are, what do we think? Are we are we disappointed? Do we think this isn't for us? Uh, well, first of all, what do you guys think? Question well, first of, the of all, hold on a second. Beyond that, <laughs> yeah, we came on this boat. We came to Malta for one purpose, one purpose only. Number one. Food. <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not the food. But one purpose only is, if, is to figure out where the boat life is for us. Whether we can actually survive on a boat and live on a boat and do everything that needs to be done on a boat, like survival. I'm, I'm going to lump everything into that. Survival so means I think food, school, sailing, work, everything. Storms. <laughs> and, and we got tested. Yeah, so wait, let's ask them first before we give our opinion. Okay. What do you guys think? You've seen several videos at this point. Do you think we can hack it? Now, just don't base it all on me because I got grit, I can be tough even if I'm seasick, but as a family, as a whole, from what you saw, we were kind of pretty much literally thrown into the storm. What do you think? Do we have what it takes? Do you think we have what it takes though? I do, but you know me, I will, I will give up. I never give up, and sometimes I should give up. <laughs> so I think we have what it takes. You think we have what it takes? I think we have what it takes. I think we have a long education ahead of us. I think this is going to take several years before we get on a boat. We have a lot to read and learn not and study. Years. Not several years. Will's it's crazy. not going to be several years. Don't listen to Will. What I think is going to happen, and this is what I honestly think is going to happen, is that we're going to finish our RV trip throughout all of Europe, so we still have about 18 more countries to go. We're, we're so excited to go see You're Norway, not going to say now I'm going to get on the sailboat then. And I think <laughs> we're going to be heading straight to Southeast Asia and going boat shopping immediately. Watch. <laughs> today is, what day is today? Today is February 26th. We're going to be boat shopping. In one year you want to be on a boat? 
we're gonna be boat shopping in less than a year from now. I guarantee you that. Maybe okay. with his next wife. All right. <laughs> so, this has been our boat adventure. I think that at the end of the day, we survived. We did survive. We have a flight that leaves in three hours, so we, we gotta go. get ready to go. We're heading to Cyprus. Thank you guys for your support. Um, you Share it, share this crazy YouTube channel. It's gonna get crazier. And and the boat life is not, we're just, I guess it's on pause. It's on pause. <laughs> but it's gonna come back to full time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. We'll be back. In the next we'll episode of World Towning, we leave Malta and head over to Cyprus to decompress and enjoy a little rest and relaxation. And we have arrived in Cyprus. A new country. Country Bye. number 34. Bye. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification icon to ensure that you get all of our episodes the moment they are released. Okay, so our first stop right here is the shipwreck. What, what shipwreck is this called? I don't know. What's the name of the shipwreck? Does the shipwreck have a name? So are you a weatherman as well as a news anchor? Yes. So what's the weather like today? It is currently raining with fog. Thank you, Largo. On to sports. No way. Okay. I'll be like the book columnist or something.